Hello YouTubers, this is 777 Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on a Gemini Jets Vintage British Airways Boeing 747-400 in their Heritage Retro Landor livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model in the flaps up version. I purchased this model from Jet Collectors and their website address is www.jetcollectors.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular vintage aircraft model, allow me to share some information about the history of British Airways and how they came about, if you would please. British Airways is a British-based airline whose actual history beginnings can actually be traced back to August 25, 1919, when it was formed as well as originated from a small airline company called Aircraft Transport and Travel Limited. And after a series of mergers with different as well as various airline carriers, it was formed under the name of Imperial Airways on March 31, 1924, then merged with another British-based airline carrier that ended up forming under the name of BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, on November 24, 1939, then merged with another airline called BEA, British European Airways, on January 1, 1946, and operated under the BOAC. British Overseas Airways Corporation umbrella until September 1st, 1972, and that's when the British Airways Group was eventually established after the passage of the Civil Aviation Act of 1971 was passed, which formed the British Airways Board, which resulted in the merger of the BOAC, the British Overseas Airways Corporation, and BEA, the British European Airways, consolidated into one big airline carrier as the Consolidated Airline was officially established on March 31, 1974 and officially commenced operation by the dissolution of BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, and BEA, British European Airways, to become the airline which is known to the world today as British Airways as the British-based carriers celebrated their centennial anniversary on August 25, 2019. Whereas, the headquarters of British Airways is located in the Waterside Building, which is located in the Harmon's Worth section of London, England, which is actually a village located in the borough of Hillendon that's located northwest of Heathrow Airport, while the airline's main base of operations is located on the grounds of London Heathrow Airport, which is located approximately 14 miles west of the Central District section of London, England, and also has a major presence at Gatwick Airport, which is located approximately 30 miles south of the Central District section of London, England, in the suburb of Crawley, England. British Airways is the national flag carrier airline of the United Kingdom, as well as the largest operating airline in the United Kingdom in terms of international flights, as well as international flights serve. However, Based on fleet size and based on the number of passengers carried, it is the second largest operating airline in the United Kingdom after EasyJet. As of December 2021, or at the time of this video review posting, British Airways currently flies to 183 destinations worldwide across six inhabited continents, as British Airways is currently one of 10 airlines to own this actual distinction of permanently flying to all six inhabited continents, along with Air Canada, Air China, Delta Airlines, Emirates, Korean Air, Qantas, Qatar Airways, South African Airways, and United Airlines respectively, with an operating fleet of 254 aircraft with no unfulfilled orders pending on this aircraft type, as British Airways previously announced on July 16, 2020, that due to the COVID-19 pandemic that has affected the global airline industry as a collective, that the British-based airline decided to retire their entire fleet of Boeing 747-400s from its operations with an immediate effect as this aircraft is no longer operating in the British Airways fleet. Also as of December 2021, or at the time of this video review posting, British Airways is one of 59 airlines in the world of aviation that currently operates as a certified four-star airline carrier, according to the international airline review firm Skytrax Magazine, and the Boeing customer code for British Airways for this particular aircraft was 36. All right, everyone. Let's take a look at the front of the box here, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the British Airways title, the logo, the computer-generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, the one 200 scale diecast model aircraft information as well as the item number information you see at the front of the box.
All right, now you're looking at the back of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, some more other uh, information, the Boeing official license product decal, and then there's the Gemini Jet social media pages you see there on, it's on that box as well. You can pause and read that information if you like, but in the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving, all right? All right, now you're looking at the top of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the warning information, as well as the item number information you see at the top of the box. And now you're looking at the bottom box, and all you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal. Now you're looking at the left side of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the 1 200 scale diecast model information, the item number information, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, as well as the aircraft type you see on the left side of the box. All right, now you see the right side of the box. This is pretty much the same information on the left side of the box I showed you earlier on. All right. All right, I decided to do something different, and what you see there is the packaging. I got it standing up. That's the top of the foam, so I'm going to uh, uncover that and let you see what's inside of the packaging. Let's check it out. All right, since I took the top foaming off, this is what you see in the packaging, the actual model, the model stand, as well as the gear replacement doors and the gear replacements, as well as the actual gears for this aircraft model. I'm going to take all that out right now as we speak. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of British Airways, how they came about, plus all the details here on the front of the box, as well as the information at the back of the box, plus all the packaging, the details you see here, the model stand, the actual model, as well as the gear replacement doors, and the actual gears for this model. With no further ado, everyone, here is the model out of the packaging box. Let's check it out. There it is, everyone, the Gemini Jets. Vintage British Airways Boeing 747-400 in their retro Landor Heritage livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model in a flaps up version. All right, allow me to share some information about the British Airways Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft and how this aircraft came a part of their fleet and unfortunately it's no longer part of this fleet, okay? British Airways became the seventh carrier after Northwest Airlines, Singapore Airlines, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, Cathay Pacific, Lufthansa, and United Airlines respectively that acquired this iconic jetliner aircraft as British Airways took delivery of their very first Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft which bears the registration ship number G-BNLA on June 30, 1989 and took delivery of their very last Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft, which bared the registration ship number G-BYGG on April 29, 1999. British Airways at one time registered and operated as many as 58 of these iconic jetliners in their fleet, as British Airways was previously the largest airline operator of the Boeing 747-400 aircraft variant up until July 16, 2020. And that's when British Airways announced that it had decided to retire their entire fleet of Boeing 747-400s with immediate effect, as this aircraft has since been replaced with their Boeing 777-300ERs, their Airbus A350-1000XWBs, as well as their forthcoming next-generation Boeing 777-9Xs, which is scheduled to enter the British Airways fleet sometime in 2024. Now let's talk about the Heritage Retro Landor livery scheme on this aircraft. This is probably my favorite livery scheme of British Airways, quite frankly, but I digress. It's just my personal favorite. And this is the Heritage Retro livery scheme of British Airways, which was unveiled on March 9, 2019. As this special livery Boeing 747 was the third of four aircraft that was painted in four different Heritage Retro livery schemes to commemorate the 100th anniversary celebration of British Airways, which was celebrated on August 25, 2019. The actual livery scheme that's actually displayed on this particular aircraft is actually called the Landor Livery Scheme, in which this particular livery scheme came about on December 4, 1984, when British Airways unveiled a new identity with a new livery scheme which was called the Landor livery scheme as the most distinctive change to this livery scheme was the addition of the red speed wing cheat line which runs along the entire part of the fuselage as you see there 
as British Airways sported this livery scheme from 1984 up until 1997 when this livery scheme was eventually replaced with the Union Jack livery scheme. And another reason that British Airways decided to place the Retro Heritage livery scheme on this particular Boeing 747-400 jetliner aircraft was to recognize that this was actually the second livery scheme in the airline's history that was introduced after the consolidated merger of BOAC, British Overseas Airways Corporation, and BEA, British European Airways, and was formed under the British Airways brand 10 years earlier in 1974, as this livery scheme was the livery scheme that replaced the carrier's first livery design since becoming British Airways in 1974, which was the Nagus livery scheme. The Heritage Retro Landor Livery Scheme was painted on this aircraft at the IAC, the International Aerospace Coating Paint Bay Facility, which is located on the grounds of Dublin Airport in Dublin, Ireland, on March 1, 2019, as this particular livery scheme was supposed to remain on this aircraft until its scheduled retirement in 2023. But unfortunately, British Airways decided on July 16, 2020 to retire their entire fleet of Boeing 747-400s with immediate effect as it took approximately eight days to paint this entire aircraft in this Heritage Retro Livery Scheme. The British Airways Heritage Retro Landor Livery Scheme, by the way, was actually created and developed by the consultancy firm of Landor Associates, whose global headquarters is located in San Francisco, California. But on the record, though, they decided to keep this aircraft anyway. This is the one of the four aircraft they decided to keep. I think most of the other 747s has begun to be getting scrapped, okay? So, with that information out of the way about this particular livery scheme, as well as the aircraft, with no further ado, everyone, let's get down to the nitty-gritty and allow me to show you all the details on this aircraft model. Shall we? Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the uh, front of the aircraft here on the uh, port side where you see mostly blue right here, and then there's the gray, and then there's the British Airways billboard title right there. And then you see the front nose gears right here, the nose gear struts, the landing gear lights, the nose gear door featuring the partial registration ship number on there, Lima Yankee, and then there's the Peter tubes and the static ports, and then there's the radon nose cone, then there's the uh, windshield wipers and the cockpit windows, Please stay tuned. I, I'm going to give you a better visual view of those details later on in the review. Please stay tuned for that part. And then right there underneath by the L1 entrance door is the uh, city of Swansea, which is this little name of the aircraft right here. This aircraft was given the name the city of Swansea originally from February 1993 up until January 2002 and was renamed the city of Swansea once again in March 2019 after this aircraft was repainted in the Heritage Retro Landor Livery Scheme, as the city of Swansea is a historical city that's located on the southwest coast of Wales, which is considered the second largest city in Wales after Cardiff, as the name Swansea is actually derived from Old Norse and local traditions state that this city was first originally a Viking trade post, which was actually founded by the late King Swing Fortbeard, who was born 19 who was born in 960 sorry about that 960 and died in 1014 who was the king of Denmark all right and then you see underneath the uh the city of Swansea title is the Royal Mail decal which is this little decal right there Royal Mail is the primary service company in the United Kingdom that's been in business since 1516 as British Airways uses this service to transfer their mail and parcel around the world okay and then you see the little red uh, speed wing cheat line you see there across uh, the lower part of the fuselage, which goes all the way back to the rear of the aircraft you see there. Now you're looking at the lower center of the aircraft. What you're looking at are these engines right here, there, and there as well. And these are the Rolls-Royce RB211-524G turbofan type engines that was used on this particular British Airways Heritage Retro Landor Livery Boeing 747-400 Jumbo Jetliner aircraft. And then these the uh, the engine cones right here as well as there as well. Now we're going to turn this aircraft model around. We're going to check out if the engine blades actually spin. Let's check it out. 
All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the port slash left side of the aircraft. No engine strikes here or there, but let's check out the engine blade spin. Let's check it out. Okay, that one spins pretty good. And then let's check this inner one. Perfect. And then you see the inboard landing light right here inside of the, uh, on the edge of the wings right there. It's painted there, but it's very detailed. As well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears you see on here, as well as the landing gear struts, as well as the actual landing gear door. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the starboard side of the aircraft. Now let's check out if they spin over here as well. Yes, this one does. Perfect. This one as well. Awesome. And you see the inboard landing light right there, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears, including the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors. And then there's the inboard landing light on the side of this, on the edge of that wing on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft where you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows and above the cockpit windows is the uh, partial registration ship number N L Y. Yeah, November Lima Yankee. And then there's the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the radar nose cone, the nose gear doors, the nose gear landing lights, landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front nose landing gears. All right, now you're looking at the winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft featuring the red navigation light that's displayed on the edge of this wing that sits near this wingtip device. All right, now you got a better visual view of the outer landing bogey gears as well as the center bogey gears on this side of the aircraft. You see there, which includes the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. You also see the landing gears here, the center bogey gears, as well as the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors displayed there as well. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side, and what you're looking at now is the 100 1919 to 2019 decal, which is this decal right there. And this particular commemorative decal actually commemorates the 100th anniversary of British Airways. And even though British Airways wasn't officially established as an airline until March 31st, 1974, the airline's history beginnings can actually be traced back to August 25th, 1919, when it actually started from a small airline company called Aircraft Transport and Travel Limited, which flew their very first inaugural flight from London to Paris, France, with the combination series of airline mergers from various airline carriers such as Imperial Airways, BOAC, and BEA that eventually formed the airline that has become known to the world today as British Airways as a result of the airline's history. Okay. Now you're looking at the registration ship number down here. Registration ship number Gulf that's Bravo November Lima Yankee, which is this right here. Registration ship number Gulf that's Bravo November Lima Yankee. This was British Airways 24th Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft that entered the British Airways fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on January 25, 1993 and was delivered to British Airways on February 10, 1993. This aircraft was the third of four aircraft that was painted in the airline's Heritage Retro livery scheme to commemorate the 100th anniversary of British Airways, which was celebrated on August 25, 1919. But unfortunately, this aircraft was eventually withdrawn from the British Airways fleet on March 23, 2020 and was flown to an aircraft storage facility that's located on the grounds of Cardiff Airport, which is located in Cardiff, Wales, on June 15, 2020, where this aircraft is currently stored up at as of December 2021 or at the time of this video review posting. Now you're looking at the tail fin of the aircraft. And what you see is the coat of arms logo displayed on its tail fin, which is this right here. And this logo can be seen on just about every British Airways aircraft flying today, as the coat of arms logo also displays British Airways commitment in providing great customer service to every passenger. This has been British Airways' main mission objective since its inception. Also inside the lower part of the logo features a motto that British Airways actually goes by. It is called to fly, to serve. It's right in there okay then you see the partial registration ship number right there november lima yankee see on top of the tail fin of the aircraft and then now you look at the airline's logo that's displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft that sits underneath the coat of arms logo which is this logo right here 
This was the corporate logo of British Airways, which actually resembles that of a partial Union Jack flag that British Airways sported for 23 years from 1974 up until 1997, as the Union Jack flag represents the country of Great Britain, where British Airways currently operates from as the national flag carrier airline for the country of Great Britain. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft, what you see is the APU, auxiliary power unit exhaust hole, and there is an actual hole here. Check that out, see? And underneath the APU exhaust hole is the actual strobe light you see there, as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Let's check that out. There it is. There you have it. The British Airways Boeing 747-400 in their Heritage Retro Landor livery scheme from the rear view all right now you're looking at this aircraft from the starboard side of the aircraft the front of it where you see the front uh nose gears the nose gear struts the landing gear lights the landing gear door features the partial registration ship number on there lima yankee see the peter tubes and the static ports the radon nose cone the windshield wipers the cockpit window the british airways billboard title uh the city of swansea na named the aircraft the front cargo container loading door, the red speed wing logo you see there that goes all the way back to the rear of the aircraft, you see that. As well as the inboard landing light you see right there on the edge of the wing. Alright, now you're looking at the center of the aircraft here on the starboard side, the lower center that is, and between the engine you see the uh, Center uh, bogey gear there featuring the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear door. I'm going to show you a better vi uh, view of that later on in a moment. But And then you're looking at the uh, Rolls-Royce RB211-524G turbofan type engines on this side of the aircraft as well. There's the engine cones there and there as well. All right, now you're looking at the winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft featuring the green navigation light that sits next to this winglet wingtip device on the edge of this wing. All right, now you got a better visual view of the outer bogey gears on this side of the aircraft as well as the center bogey gears on this side of the aircraft as well, featuring the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. And then there's the center bogey gear there, and then which features the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear door there as well. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft here on the starboard side where you see the rear cargo container loading door, the AFT bulk bin door, the registration ship number, the 100, that 100 1919 to 2019 decal as well as the air the uh the coat of arms logo and the airlines logo which resembles that a partial of the union jack flag as well let's check that out all right there's the coat of arms logo the airlines logo as well as the parcel registration ship number you see at the top of the tail fin of this aircraft all right Okay, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, please allow me to let you check out one feature which is the rolling gears. Let's check that out. Rolls pretty good. Alright. It does tilt. You see there. And then the nose gear swivels as well. You see there, there, and there. Okay. So, with that said, Allow me to show you this aircraft mount from the area of bird's eye view. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at this aircraft mount from the area of bird's eye view where it's light gray as you can see there. We're going to start at the front where you see the uh, radar on nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, the partial registration ship number above the cockpit windows, November Lima Yankee, you see the power escape hatch door, you go around this distinctive hump is the uh, anti-collision beacon light. Um, then you see the British Airways tires on both sides. You see the little uh, high frequency antenna there. Then we slide down here. You see the ADF antennas in 3D. You see there. You see the Wi-Fi box antenna. Another high frequency antenna. You see the 100 uh, years uh, 1919 to 2019 decal on both sides. The vertical stabilizer is known as the tail fan as well as the horizontal stabilizers, featuring the two little dots right there, as well as over here as well. Those two little dots are called illuminator lights, and the sole purpose of these illuminator lights is to actually light up this tail here when you used to fly during nighttime. 
Now let's check out the engines and the wings from the aerial bird's eye view as well. Let's check those out. See the engines there, there. No wing walkway, but you got the flaps, slats, aileron, spoils, what have you. Field dumb valve as well as the uh, the wing wing tip device on this side. Let's check out over here. See the engines there, there. And then there's no wing walkway on this side either, but you do have the flaps, slats, aileron, spoils, what have you. Field dumb valve as well as the, the winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft as well. Now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model. We're going with it's mostly blue for the most part. And what you got is the uh, radio nose cone, the crew escape hatch door, uh, the front nose gear door, the actual front nose gear. And then you see the uh, high frequency antenna there, anti-clearance and beacon light, the hole where the stand goes in at, the center bogey gears, I'll come back to those momentarily, the Gemini Jets logo, a couple more high frequency antennas, the pressure relief valve, the APU housing door, as well as the horizontal stabilizers underneath. Now let's check out the center bogey gears here on the side of the aircraft. The tilt, perfect, perfect. And then you're looking at the gears over here as well, as well as the engines right there, as well as the wings underneath. It includes the flaps, slats, aileron, spoils, what have you, fuel dump valve, registration ship number, as well as the winglet, wingtip device. Now let's check out over here. Gears over here as well. And then you see the engines right there, right there, as well as the uh, wings underneath. You got the flaps, slats, aileron, spoils, what have you. Fuel dumb valve, as well as the winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, since I've showed you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model, now I'm going to put it on this nice little metal model stand I showed you earlier that was in part of the packaging. So with no further ado, everyone, here is the airline model on the stand. Let's check it out. All right, fine. Got this model on the stand with no problem, no hesitation. As you see it being displayed on the stand in a takeoff landing position being viewed from the port side of the aircraft. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft in a takeoff landing position with the model on the stand being viewed from the front side of the aircraft. Front view side, that is. Now you're looking at this model in the takeoff landing position with the model on the stand being displayed in on the starboard side of the aircraft. And finally, you're seeing this model being displayed in the takeoff landing position with the model on the stand being viewed from the tail cam angle. All right. Before I take this model to stand, I got it in this angle for a reason, and the reason is the magnetic gears that actually came with the model that I showed you earlier is in part of the packaging. So I'm going to go ahead and take them all, starting with the front nose gear, let you see what I'm talking about. That's magnetic. The outer bogey gear on this side, that's magnetic there as well. The center bogey gear, that's magnetic. The outer bogey gear on the starboard side, there as well as the center bogey gear on this side as well. There. So since I got all these uh, gears off this model, I'm gonna let you see this model at a different angle in flight mode position with the model on stand. Let's check it out. Okay, now you see this model being displayed in flight mode position slash gears up position with the model on the stand. Now you got one or two options how you wanna display this model. You wanna keep it in the in flight mode slash gears up position without the gears, that's fine. Remember, these, here's the gear replacement doors that actually come with the uh, model. You can uh, use these to substitute your gears while you split it like this in flight mode position. Or you can keep it in the gear down position uh, with the gears on there, your choice. But I choose to keep mine on there because it adds more value to the model. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and put these gears back on this model, take this model to stand and go ahead and wrap up this model with you, all right? All right, let's talk about the seating configuration. Prior to July 16, 2020, British Airways had three seat and configurated cabin layout versions that they previously used on their Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft. 
However, on this particular British Airways Boeing 747-400 jumbo jetliner aircraft, it seated 345 passengers in a four-class configurated cabin layout. Here's the breakdown, everyone, from rows one to five, which is on the main deck, which will be from here to about right here. You have 14 first-class open suites, rows 11 to 16, which is also on the main deck, which will be from here to here. You have 36 World Traveler Plus class seats, row 17 to 20, which is also on the main deck, which will be from here to here. You have 32 Club World flatbed seats, and row 60 to 64. You have an additional uh, 20 Club World flatbed seats, which is on the upper deck, which would be from here to here, which brings the total to 52 Club World flatbed seats, and rows 28 to 55, which is the rest of the main deck, which will be from here all the way back to the aircraft. You had additional 243 World Traveler class seats, which brings a total of 345 seats. And finally, British Airways previously utilized their Boeing 747-400 on routes from London Heathrow to Abuja, Accra, Ghana, Austin, Texas, Bahrain, Beijing Capital, Boston, Massachusetts, Bournemouth, Cape Town, South Africa, Cardiff, Wales, Chicago, O'Hare, Dallas, Fort Worth, Denver, Colorado, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Houston Bush Intercontinental, Johannesburg, South Africa, Kenbo, Kuwait City, Kuwait, Lagos, Nigeria, Larnaca, Las Vegas, Nevada, Los Angeles, California, Mexico City, Mexico, Miami, Florida, Nairobi, Kenya, New York, JFK, Paris, Charles de Gaulle, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Phoenix, Arizona, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, San Diego, California, San Francisco, California, Seattle, Washington, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and Washington, Dulles, and from London, Gatwick, to Atlanta, Georgia, and Krakow. Those are the routes. Those were the routes. All right, everyone, this will conclude this model. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting this model if you can find it. Otherwise, this model is almost impossible to find as we speak. However, in-flight just dropped, uh, dropped the same version. You can snatch that up if you can because I'm telling you, that's going to sell out pretty quick. So with that said, please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.